Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, because this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, our last live show for the season and another rather cold week for fishing. A very special guest joining us on the couch in a moment. But first, the usual welcomes. Adam Ring, the end of our 29 episode season is upon us and thank you for your contribution. No, thanks for having me, Dave. And who would have thought 29 weeks could go so fast? Hasn't it flown? Oh, I mean, I feel a little bit exhausted. Like it's, it's a long season. It, People it is, at home may not quite understand that, but it's a think, long season. To think the amount we've covered in Ooh. 29 short one hour episodes. It's, um, it seems like a bit of a blur sometimes. It's been great. Covered a bit of ground yeah. and a big welcome yeah. to Trelly as always, mate. You've been with us for the last 27 weeks and the viewers just love your contribution to the show too. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so, so I often wonder, actually, how you sort of some things come across. So I'm yeah. happy to hear the You're coming across all right, Charlie, <laughs> today. A big show coming your way tonight. We're talking Blue Rock, Barra, Trout Cod, Banning Netting, Super Trawlers, and much, much more with our special guest tonight, the Minister Responsible for Fish Fisheries, Jala Pulford. Jala, welcome once again to Talking Fishing. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. Uh, and congratulations on 29 episodes. Yeah, it's like on the marathon, really. Like if we're, we're nearly at the end, you know. And we don't involve. We're not going to celebrate tonight because we get out of here and we've, it's been a long working day. And uh, but it's it, you know it's it's been good. Yeah, boys, Anzac days. No, sorry, I always say boys. <laughs> boys and girls. Rude. Yeah. Rude. Anzac, Rude. Anzac day um, wasn't it different. Normally, Anzac day would be a long weekend. Yeah. And a great weekend for fishing. It was a non-event. Yeah, that's wasn't right. It? it felt strange yeah. not having the public holiday. To be honest, yeah. it's, you're always well, you know, this time here on the thread. I'll be rumour file this morning that the plumbers had Anzac Day today. Yesterday was an RDO four day weekend. I, I did oh, hear okay. that. Not sure how true it was, uh, but it, but it was tradies. a non event. Yeah. It, it, um, felt, it felt strange. Normally we yeah. go into planning for a long weekend through yeah, the stores, yeah, trolley, and yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it felt, like, felt a bit short. Plumber over the trolley, <laughs> big <laughs> Anzac Day in Shepparton. Apparently, I think we got some footy. <laughs> oh, trolley! Every weekend's a long weekend, yeah. trolley. Yeah. Trolley, that was actually said to us by someone in Shepparton uh, yeah. on Anzac oh, Day night, that and random <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, you got the two up there, and um, anyway, trolley, the things trolley gets up to. I tell you what. Anyway, we're going to get the smart stuff out of the way very, very quickly. Now, Charla, I just heard a rumour about you too. I don't. I hope I'm not right going to put you, you on the spot. Which <laughs> one? No, no, this is, Which yeah, one? This, no, no. Oh, you're not. This is a yes or no answer, okay? No, nothing, no, don't want to go into any detail. Yes or no, because I've always said that Joe Helper is the greatest fisheries minister, certainly in my lifetime, and I think Joe did some fantastic things for fishing. You know, the first minister to really bring new artificial reefs into Port Phillip Bay, record amounts of stocking, did some really great things, yeah. best minister. But I just heard that you actually baked a cake for one of your staff this week. I in did. In a nice little gesture, is that true? Yes, yes, I did. I did. I actually saw uh, Joe Helfer on Friday night. Oh, really? Mad yeah. for fishing, still yeah. mad for fishing, yeah. and doing some great work at, uh, on the Tolondo reference group yeah. for us uh, to this day. So a wise, uh, a wise uh, counsellor that I'll be able to chat to from time to time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, yes, I did. So that was Friday night, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I, I did bake a cake. I had somebody leaving the office. So well, there you go. I think that takes the cake. Well on the way to being the best minister. I bet you, I bet There's none of, it, none of it left to share with you. And no, you it, it's actually yeah. a gin and tonic cake. Oh, gin oh and was tonic. it? Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. it might add tequila, but anyway. It was excellent. Uh, it lasted about that long. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure Joe Helper never baked a cake for any of his yeah. stuff. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> uh, just something to mark on your calendar for August too. The Melbourne 4x4, an outdoor show and fishing and boating expo. That's a mouthful at the Melbourne Showgrounds. August 21 to 23, we'll be presenting a live performance of Talking Fishing on both Saturday and Sunday. If you want to see us, mark it in your calendar now. August 21 to 23, Melbourne Showgrounds. Come and see us live. Um, our photo? 
What was that? Where's our photo on the 4x4 four four flag? <laughs> oh, we don't get it. Dudes out there, Worsling, uh, Spider oh, River, yeah. all those oh, boys. But anyway, boys and girls, time to check what's making news in the world of fishing. And now it's time for the news. The fishery news. Sounds a bit fishy to me. Couple of uh, bits of news, and Jala, feel free to jump in whenever you want because uh, a lot of them are fisheries related. During, oh, we'll hope they're fisheries related because <laughs> it's a fishing program. Yeah, well. uh, during a recent visit to Gippsland Lakes, fisheries scientists drifted over the reef modules off Meetung that were deployed in March 2014. Um, so these are the reef balls. I think we've had them on the show before. The artificial reefs put yep. in, yep. Uh, like I was just saying, Joe Helper was you know one of the instigators of all that. Um, in just 12 months, the modules have been colonised by mussels, algae, sea squirts, and seahorses. The divers also observed a number of fish species of interest to recreational fishers, including black brim. The reefs were funded by state government and recreational fishing licence fees, and fisheries will travel to Gippsland in the coming months to monitor the performance of all eight of these new reefs, so stay tuned. Um, there's actually a map up there that's got the GPS marks, and if you want to get on Fisheries Victoria's website, which I think is DPI, DEPI, something like that, because they keep changing their name, um, I'm sure you'll Google it, artificial reefs in the Gippsland land lakes areas and I think they're in Lake Ties are also in Mallacoota a great initiative boys and uh, it looks to it looks like they're, they're starting to work so Definitely. that's all good we're going to move quickly uh, the next one AFMA strengthens marine mammal protection in the small pelagic fishery uh, they reported or sorry the Geelong Star I think everyone knows the super trawler by now has notified AFMA of two seal mortalities and four dolphin mortalities any mortality of marine am mammals is a serious concern for AFMA AFMA and the Geelong Star will immediately be required to take additional precautions to further reduce the risk of marine mammal interactions. I've got a beef with the next uh, sentence that we'll show. Unfortunately, this is AFMA, unfortunately from time to time, both commercial and recreational fishers will accidentally harm marine mammals and other protected species whilst while seeking to put seafood on our tables. We will continue to work with marine mammal experts and fishers to ensure that all reasonable steps are taken to minimise the risks. Now, seriously boys, I mean, mm -hmm. no one wants this super trawler in our waters. People have got no. genuine concerns about the food source it's taking for some of the pelagics that we love to fish for. How dare they throw recreational fishers in there to say we accidentally harm mammals? Yeah, it's a bit of a long shot, that one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Jala, it, um, it? your opinion, state government's opinion on the super trawler, because it's, well, it's parked down Geelong right now. Yeah, it certainly won't be permitted to be um, fishing Victorian waters, that's for sure. I've expressed our concerns about it uh, to the federal government. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a whole lot of work for them to do on the science to demonstrate that it's not going to have a really big and long-term impact mm. on um, on our fishing and in particular the, the um, bluefin tuna. Uh, the like they're talking about increasing a catch from 16 ton to 16,000 ton and because it's never yeah. been done before no one can conclusively say what the impact of it's going to be. We've seen in the last three weeks record number sorry record size southern bluefin tuna, tuna caught particularly off Port McDonald just over the South Australian border and these fish rely on a food source you know yeah, they wouldn't be there yeah. exactly. if it wasn't for the food yeah. and, and this exactly, is the exact same food, food, so food, food source as this yeah. exactly, yeah. trawling, dragging a so, net um, so, yeah. I, I, look I don't know where it's headed I mean obviously the boat's tied up in uh, Geelong, um, where it goes from here, I think it's so it's completed its first expedition. I guess it's got a truckload or a boatload of, of fish on board. Well, that's that's right, and and I think the federal government have got a bit more work to do on this. Like the commercial sector mm. and wreck fishers alike, the environmental groups are all united. You know, the jury's out on this, yeah. and. They've some work to do. Like you so, say, Joe, I mean, it's uh, yeah, we're, we're talking a three nautical kilometre. From the from the shoreline, three nautical miles. I mean, yeah. in, in the in the in the, miles, the, the, yeah. the scope of fishing. I mean, that's only a, a cast, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically and I think um, after have been pretty proactive in talking with Very. the owners and saying, "Hey, we'll, we've drawn a map. We don't want you in these areas." But I think now that there's been a few yeah. mammal deaths, that there's a big push for, "Hey, yeah. no, no, we don't want this in your waters. You know, yeah, yeah. Get out of here." Yeah, and they're going uh, at Joel's point there as far as the science and what we've got to find out and how these people operate and what they take out of certain areas. Yeah, yeah. The debate will continue, but coming up on Talking Fishing Catch of the Week and lots to discuss with the Minister. See you right after this. Talking Fishing. 
Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Plenty of good fish caught during the week, even though it was just horrific conditions, wasn't oh, it? Like, no, seriously. Yeah. It's getting fishing. seriously cold now, too. Like, no. fine up hell, eh? And in dark. The it's no worries at all. Is it really? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I know the next three days are meant to be fun. blue sky yeah. and absolutely beautiful. I think 21 on Friday. Yeah. Calm yeah. seas for the next few days. Yeah. Then what happens to the weekend? Pretty go downhill. Yeah. No, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, the good thing is, plenty of people fishing down at Portland. I think uh, there's quite a few fish moved from Port Mac onto Portland heading uh, east. And I know a couple of guys close to our shop have uh, dropped barrels off Portland in the yeah. last week and they didn't yeah. want to tell anyone. So anyway, <laughs> uh, let's have a look at some of the small fish. And Jerry Morseman is the first one up. Southern bluefin tuna off Portland yesterday. Fantastic fish. Mm. Look, I think the fish, let's be realistic, they're 10 to 15 kilos now. Yeah, that's right. People will yeah. call them 20, 25, no, they're 10 to 28. No. They're 10 to 15 kilos. And they're, and they're great fun. Mm. And uh, and congratulations to Jerry. He works with me down at Mornington. Mornington yeah. And uh, good on you, Jerry, on your first ever fish, mate. Yeah. So a long it's long way from the toadies you normally catch off the pier down there I in Mornington. I think out of so. our 20 staff, 18 of them have been tuna fishing in the last week. Yeah. 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 You and I, yeah. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's got to hold the That's fall. a large yeah. lure. How big was that lure? That it's a pretty big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Big, yeah. yeah, nine or ten inch lure. They're taking the big lures. Um, have a look at the next one, Jose Napoleon. He got a beautiful southern, or well, quite a few Tag. southern blue fin tuna there, <laughs> down at Portland on board Sharky's boat, Sharkmen Fishing Charters, and uh, they've been doing the goods. Not going too far out either. That's promising. Yeah. It's It's been a strange one through the stores for this Portland season, because all everyone is talking about for us is those big fish, yeah. the yeah. 100 kilo plus, you know, a few from Portland and quite a few from Port Mac, but um, Portland's going right off with Alex Dodo's small another fish. one, uh, beautiful southern bluefin tuna off Portland as well, so that's, you know, traditional uh, model this time of year that yeah. um, you get. You Keeps know, them around, have some yeah. fun on them, it's great. Absolutely, yeah. and beautiful eating, easy to yeah. clean, like, yeah. you get a big one, I'd <laughs> hate to clean a big one because it, it takes a while, but... I do it um, yeah, so I do eat well, don't yeah. I? Oh, they're beautiful, yeah. yeah. And don't ruin them by cooking them either. Yeah. Oh, just raw? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, have them raw. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Sensational. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to cook them just so quickly, yeah, keep right. them raw in the middle and nice yep. and moist. So yeah, let's keep moving through. Um, Mick Sukovic, a beautiful southern calamari in the eastern That's entrance a to West calamari. Calamari. That, that is. Wow. Do you know what? And, and I know we had Corey Green, the squid Great scientist fun. from Queenscliff, on last week. But um, he'd say you know the best time of year for size calamari would be that sort of October November time. There are some big calamari yeah, around at the moment. That's, That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Will you take uh, out that, John? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lake Woody Bollock, I think that's how you say yeah. it, Charlie, at your Geelong yep. store way. Uh, look at the red fin it's coming big, out of there at the moment. big red fin. It's 47 centimetres. <laughs> yeah, there's been some rippers actually coming out of there. That is a cracker. I know a few of your boys have been fishing that <laughs> they uh, have, reservoir. Yeah. And yeah. That's that is a crack. They've been walking out with sticks and sticking them in the mud with a hanger, and they're putting their keeper net on them, yeah, casting yeah. around, catching a few reddies, put them in a keeper net, yeah. walk around, and then sort of pick up a stick and walk out. So it's, it's is that right? Yeah. And some trout down there too. That, that's a crack, and oh. great eating too. So nice fish. And uh, we're going to blame you for the next one, Jala. Um, oh, a nice. beautiful brown yeah. trout, Troy Longson, out of Tolondo Reservoir. You can't catch those sort of fish; they won't survive without water. And thank you. Well, you know, we don't often get the opportunity to say thanks one on one in front of an audience, um, but to you, Lisa Neville and Daniel Andrews, thank you because this yeah. is what's being produced at Lake Tolondo now. Yeah, we were very pleased to be able to get moving on that election promise yeah. so quickly, yeah. and it's great to see that water there in the background of Troy's photo. It's yeah. so good. It's so good. <laughs> So you're responsible for it. Pardon? So what you're responsible for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good so times I and, and yeah. big fish. So. So it's not the first photo like that I've seen. I, um, <laughs> I, I know that the uh, Tolondo Working Group, they like to go up the night before and... You know, text me, text me back a photo. Make yeah, sure that it's great. make sure that they're doing an on-site inspection before they sit down and have their meeting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've, I've heard some of those stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the boys nice, in the corner. Nice stories in a beautiful area. Really, yeah. really beautiful area. It Amazing is. sunrises. Let's keep on the subject of stocking fish and and fresh water. I have an um, exclusive for you. You've got an exclusive. I do. Let us Maybe should have dropped this in the news segment earlier today. Yeah, we um, just ran out, but any ran out of time. But anyway, talk no, about no. it now. So, so uh, ex exclusive uh, and announced for the first time on Talking Fishing tonight. I'm um, very pleased to announce uh, that the largest ever golden perch uh, stocking in Victoria's history mm. um, is uh, commencing today, Lake Eildon, a quarter of a million. Quarter of a million quarter fish. Quarter of a million. Yep, so an additional 200,000 on the 50,000 already done. Yep. It's going to be massive come mm. November. 
Wow. That's amazing. Charlie, you've spoken about it right through the season, how good yeah. the Golden Perch fishing has been in Lake Yildon, and particularly when it comes into that period when they're, they're on fire and they school yep. up and that sort of stuff. Um, that's going to make a serious change to Lake Yildon as far as catchability. Uh, th yeah. There's actually a, a few people got on our Facebook today, and I asked for some questions um, you know, to ask you. Excellent. And someone got on there and said, I don't want to ask a question. I just want to say thank you for all these things. You know, and, oh, that's nice. And, yeah. and it's serious because 20 years ago these opportunities weren't here and you know the last I, I'd have to say it started with Bob Cameron um, when he was minister that some of these really really big improvements to recreational fishing have, have occurred probably over the last 12 years I guess and yep. for it to keep continuing and getting bigger and better mm -hmm. you just go wow thank you because it is sensational yeah. that's that's very lovely yeah. it is and we've had some really great feedback about it but rec fishing you know you're talking about 750,000 Victorians, mm. we want to grow that community to a million. Um, you know, a lot of people care about this, a lot of people mm. love getting out and wetting a line, having mm. good time, spending yeah. time with family and friends. Um, so we just, you know, we want to be behind that, we want to be supporting it. Um, the fish stocking uh, plan for the government to get from 3 million to 5 million, so this is a, a big part of that and very exciting part of that. But yeah. it's nice to have some good feedback. Usually Absolutely. people give politicians feedback, it's not so friendly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked in that, uh, in the 1 million, in the, um, electoral promises we see um, economic and social well-being yep yeah right. now we all know the the economic well-being as far as being financial mm. but the social well-being I think is really really underestimated with getting kids out mm. and families out in the mm. fishing it's so hard to measure too because you can't put a dollar value you can't. or a, that's right. just, you know, like, what's the measure <coughs> it's happiness right. like yeah. um, it's, it's family time it's, it's, all, it's, all, yeah. it's, it's, it's the, it's the mm. You know, the loads of photos we receive yeah. each week yeah. for Catch of the Week yeah. and yeah. the ones that don't kids. make it here either. Yeah, the kids. The kids. Oh, yeah. school holidays comes around yeah. and, you know, 85% yeah. of our Catch of the Week photos are all the kids with either yeah. their first fish or yeah. the yeah. first time in a while they've been able to get out with their families and yeah. it's great. But everywhere I go, I have people stop me and, you know, I'll be talking to them about you know something to do with the agriculture portfolio yeah. the regional development portfolio or if i'm you know out with family and friends you know um away from away from my immediate work environment people always stop and they want to talk about target one million like yeah. everywhere i go it's a lot of people um who just love it absolutely just absolutely yeah. love it and and wouldn't it be nice if we could measure happiness <coughs> but yeah. if we can yeah. you know letters oh, yeah. photos we'll get to the jala poll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we this can't pick like, it up on camera yet <laughs> there are you going to sit like, oh, there's the Jala Parliament. It's like a question time at it's Parliament. Been, it's been building. <laughs> Jala, something that people aren't happy about. We're going to move uh, on to a couple of other subjects. Boat ramp fees has got to be the number one subject that we receive mail on. Yep. People are sick of it. And I think the only... Uh, solution to this is to bring, you've got local councils, you've got Parks Victoria, Melbourne Water, you've got um, committees of management. I think the only way to resolve this is to bring particularly Western Port and Port Phillip, all those boat ramps under one single authority. Do you have an opinion on that? Oh, look, I think it's it's a complicated issue, and I'd yeah. be interested in maybe going through my pile of correspondence yeah. here and <laughs> having a bit having a bit more of a chat to you about the range of issues that people raise, whether it's all the same problem or a whole bunch of different problems in different locations. There are a lot of different authorities, local councils, CMAs, mm. um, that that govern this at the moment, and so I imagine that probably does cause a lot of confusion for people. Um, what I can say to you that is that the government has no plans um, to increase fees uh, but I understand that if people are you know paying a fee they want to get something for it and mm. so we've got some work to do around access and things like that yeah absolutely yeah and uh, look I, I um, we do receive a lot of this and I, you know, many people don't understand different portfolios and that it's not something that really probably fits under the fisheries minister's portfolio boat ramps because it probably fits under perhaps part of Lisa Neville's, part of the Minister for Ports. Yep. Uh, it's complicated. It's well, not it's local government. Yeah, that's oh, what yeah, she and is. local government. It, it, it councils. A, a state but government that yeah. can resolve it just will get a big gold badge hanging off the, <laughs> yeah. off the yeah. pocket yeah. one yeah. day, but, I think. But just because it's complicated, it's not a reason to not try and make it better for people. I mean, yeah. in fact, it's really more common than not that any issue that we deal with has a little bit of something else and a little bit of someone someone else. And, mm. you know, mm. so we do. I mean, we actually do um, 
a lot of coordination behind the scenes yeah. across government. It's a really big part of what goes on every yeah. day, actually. Yeah, it's such a bureaucratic, logistical nightmare to sort of get things together. Or you can put your boat in up at the Goulburn River. We don't charge. No. Well, Trelly, you can put right. it in other any <laughs> other state in Australia and yeah. you don't get charged. So yeah. Let's keep moving it. along. Uh, another well, we, announcement. But, but we, oh, want, yep. we want our wreck fishers to be enjoying all the wonderful yeah. Victorian locations. Yep. So, you know, that's that's our focus. I'll keep the dialogue open with uh, the new ED of fisheries, if I can, and that's maybe yeah. another little exclusive because I don't know that it's public yet. There's a new Executive Director of Fisheries Victoria. Well, while we're announcing things, yes, yeah. the new Executive Director of Fisheries Victoria is Travis Dowling. Is He'll he around? He should well, be he's in. around. I don't know if we can get yes. somewhere, but he's... Uh He's trying to hide with the boys Step in the out. control room. Well, well known, well known yeah. to um, fishers in Victoria, and uh, we're going to invite Trav on the couch to say hello while we're busting one exclusive <laughs> after another yeah. on talking yeah. fishing. Travis, here you need to cuddle up right to me because oh, if right. you can, I oh, know oh, there you go, you're on, you're on there, Trav. But, uh, yeah. You're on. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. The new ED of fisheries, yeah. and uh, normally you're in shorts and t-shirt. You've actually come. We didn't tell you we were going to announce this tonight, but no. you're looking pretty suave there. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I've got my best suit out uh, coming along, but uh, no, I'm really uh, absolutely just looking forward to the opportunity and I mean, there's just so many great things happening in fishing in Victoria at the moment and so, you know, we just can't wait to get into it. Target one million commitments, there's just so much to do. You probably don't know Travis uh, at home, but Travis was second in charge uh, for fisheries. He went off and did a couple of other little things for probably about 18 months now. Yeah, a couple, said, a couple so. of years ago. And yeah. he's back in the hot seat now and he will yeah. do a damn good job because I know that he's uh, done it in the past. Trav, that's it. That's enough okay. about you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on Talking right. Fishing Product right. of the Week <laughs> and we continue our discussion with Minister for Fisheries, Jala Pulford. See you after this. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And welcome back to Talking Fishing. Uh, our special guest in the studio tonight is the Minister responsible for fisheries, Jala Pulford. And uh, without further ado, ads, product of the week. Let's get I'm, into it. I'm going to fly through it, Dave, because I know we've got a lot to cover. Um, but first up, I know Kev will put up on the screen there, will be the jelly beans. We're talking trout tonight. Okay. I should say first, we're talking trout coming into the cooler months, the trout yeah. come out to play. Um, so uh, let's just clarify for people, six weeks until the end of trout season, That's right. the close season, yep. but lakes, you're still allowed yes, to fish in the lakes, yeah, and there are some sensational lakes fishing for trout. Exactly, right and, and a lot of this stuff admittedly is based around lake fishing for trout. Yeah. Um, the jelly beans which you just saw are just a tiny soft plastic, it's purely unweighted, a nice little paddle tail. The reason this kind of fits into our trout market is you can hang it, oh, it's kind of hard to see there, but you can hang it off the single hook of a Tassie Devil and it just acts as a neat little trailer. I oh, see so you're trolling. Yeah. Uh, you're trolling this? You are. A you're Tassie trolling. Devil. That's right. Behind that, you've got a little plastic. You've got the little plastic. There and it's go. amazing. This has been tried and tested quite successfully at places like Bull and Merai and Parambit, places like that. Tolondo, Tolondo. this would go off. Yep. Oh, this would go off at Tolondo. Because I think what sure. we probably need to do is give this to Travis Dowling after the show because he's been to Tolondo many a time, not caught a trout. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm just thinking not if we uh, donate this to Travis. Mm, four <laughs> times. And it's, and it's, and it's a simple Four rig. times he's been to Tolondo and hasn't caught a fish. <laughs> it's, a, it's a simple rig, the small plastic tied off uh, the belly of a single hook, which holds a Tassie, and that's a little beauty. So make Even sure a little got bit a of lead there. line in front of that, too, oh. like a like 10 we'll metres. Get to that, stop line. skipping ahead. Good. Oh, yeah, sorry. Still, still me thunder. Okay. <laughs> uh, drop weight clip next. These are another trolling favourite. You can run this in conjunction uh, with your Tassie Devil and your little trailing jelly bean. You actually clip this onto your main line, give yourself as much drop back as you want. I guess it's a poor man's downrigger. You could, you could say, clip that onto your main line, little ball sinker hanging off there, uh, free swill that down to your desired depth, and, and away you go. All of that probably can coincides with the next item, which are the anti-kinks. These come in both lead and plastic, as you can see on the screen now. And what these do are basically eliminate, eliminate line twist, whether it's a silver wobbler or whether it's a tassie, something with such an erratic action can twist up line They're quite easily. An anti-kink. An anti-kink. There's a few yeah. Carlton supporters are like that in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. you know, so, kink. That's it. So that will eliminate li uh, line twist and a must for all this sort of stuff. Nice. We're talking teasers next. The Dodgers. These are deep lake specialists. Dodger. A dodger. 
Yep. It's basically a massive teaser. They carry on and throw a heap of light. It's There's a heap of different colours. Yeah. Jala's got the rainbow trout one, which you can see on your screen now. Um, there's a gold, silver, there's copper, there's all sorts of d different bits and pieces. It's purely designed it as an attractor. Yeah. Mm. That'll kick around and do its thing and get trout looking at your you lures in no time. You can big too, can't you? You can, yeah, huge. huge. Yeah. So yeah, they probably work in the same vein, I guess, as, a, as the cowbells. Cow yeah. yeah. we we that's right, which we had on a previous show. Yeah, yeah so they're a little bit easier, especially guys fishing long spin gear, so they're great. And and Trolley, you mentioned that before, but lead core. Yeah. This is something that I guess has probably been a little bit forgotten recently. To be to be honest, we're in a day and age of small spin reels. Um, admittedly, they're probably better for <coughs> small overheads That's than anything. Right. Uh, it's basically a braid with um, a lead core, as the name would suggest. Yeah. Just so to get just those lures down. Drops your line into the water deep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So you've, you've essentially you've got a sinking line uh, to get your Tassie Devils or trolling minnows or whatever whatever it may be, just to get it down that uh, that extra metre or yeah, so. Yeah, that's a hundred metres, but that comes in ten different colours. So sometimes what you'll find, you'll cut one colour off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or two or three. So colours how much off. of that would you run, Charlie? Typical. Oh, uh, this time of year, you probably run one colour or two okay. colours. So ten and to twenty metres. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And if, you, yeah. if you're fishing, say yield, and this time of year, fish out the front of say big river arm don't fish up the big because yeah. they're, they're out there ready to go up so yeah. one and then as the as the season goes on you can put two or three up yeah that's right that'd be no good in something like tolondo when it's a bit shallow not really that's no, no. Well, not that it'd be no good it's just not necessary yeah. you know shallower yeah no, i was just thinking we won't it. donate that to trevor stowling so he can help him catch <laughs> a, a fish he might want to a lot of weed yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right boys that's uh product of the week let's move on jala a couple of other subjects we want to talk about mm -hmm. blue rock lake uh yeah. it was one of the election commitments to change the rules there remove the silly horsepower and i think was it a boat length length restriction Restriction. Yes. How's that going? Uh, that's coming along. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's been a couple of rounds of consultation, mm. which is you know a necessary step along the yep. way to any change. Uh, this is um, this has now been referred to Transport Safety Victoria for them uh, to have a think about for their consideration. Uh, but we're pretty hopeful that we'll be able to have new regulations in place within weeks. Okay. Yeah. Perfect so for the prime yeah, time yeah. for trout fishing. Yeah, that's and, right. Um, that, that one's that, coming along th nicely. That will open up a really great fishery. I think we've spoken about it plenty of times yep. before, boys, mm. about the bass that have been stuck in there for many years. It, 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 it is a year-round yeah. fishery. It, it is just there's confused. one thing to say about it. It's opening up access yeah. to yep. people. That's, that's, that's fantastic. So, and, and a great area that probably needs a bit of economic activity yep. too. So, yeah. um, Barramundi in Hazelwood. People have always said <laughs> this will not yeah. happen. Now, Daniel Andrews wind the clock back to... October last year, Thread Abbey was in the studio with us, That's Adam, right. and he read out his, his policy and he said, I'm going to put Barramundi in uh, Hazelwood Pondage, and I think it's a bit of a pet project of his. Is that progressing? Yes, yes, that, that is also progressing. So uh, there's been uh, some discussions between people from my office and office and fisheries uh, with uh, with the uh, operator um, GDF Sewers uh, representatives, um, where you know quietly confident that we'll get there and, and do so sooner rather than later. So again, you know, some of these things to get them from an election commitment to, you know, tick or struck off the list um, involves a few conversations with the organisations or the people that are involved or affected, but this one's coming along well as, as well. And so um, if you're going to have a season of, uh, of the show on... Um, in you know next, catch, next catch year, of the week, catch of the week. Barrel oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, we, um, our, our good yeah. mate Mick from we Warwell will be, be in catch there. of the week every oh, week. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'm happy to declare I've been a part of some of the. I know I'm asking sort of like dumb questions sort of thing, but I have been part of some of those discussions, and I did get a phone call today just about where it was at um, offline and. I actually got a tear in my eye because it's this, along. this yeah. was a project, when I look back at some of the work we did, you know, it's, this has been years and years of work and Future Fish Foundation and AFTA actually yeah. funded a bit of research off their own back to say, hey, you know, we, we want to get this to a level where we get state government approved. We got that. It went a bit pear-shaped with the power company, but boy, oh, it's heading boy. in the right direction. And, so and no if you people don't think at home yeah. that you're going to be catching Barramundi in Victoria, 
you just heard it from the person who's in charge, yeah. the minister. It's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, we've got yeah. a bit more work to do on it, but it'll it's happen. It's going to happen. So no, no restrictions? Go. I mean, that silly girl oh, came out all... from that other Green Party and said they want to shut all the coal mine. Yeah. So coal what do we do? Go back to candles? And bug around yeah. barrel money and, fishing and down rip up the floorboards oh, no. and for heaters. You know, like, seriously, they're not going to shut down the provider of 25% yeah. of silly Victoria's girl. power overnight, Charlie. Silly girl. I yeah. think they no. might... Oh dear. <laughs> there it is. No, oh no, no idea. Up next, Kramer's mailbag and the minister gets to see the Jala pile. See you after this. Talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing. Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. <laughs> Now, for those of you people that have been watching for the full 29 weeks, although it probably wasn't for the full 29 weeks, but <laughs> Jala, it would have been, it's, it's been a few months since you've been on the show, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Um, we started this thing called the Jala Pile. So if we got mail. <laughs> if that wasn't yeah. here last time, I was That wasn't there last time. <laughs> yeah. We've been getting a shot of that. Uh, yeah. There you go. Um, seriously, genuine mail there. Are you um, handing it to me? Well, we're going to hand it to you. Uh, I'll, yeah, just a bit of bedside reading, yeah. you know, when you get the time. Excellent. But uh, anything that was too tough for us, it went on the Jala pile. <laughs> so right. so you've, the uh, you've actually got, got a fan club. club. We've actually yeah. got people writing Thanks to us saying, one for the Jala pile. Yeah. All right, so... We, we could sort it out for you, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I worked my way through it. Yeah. I think out of the 300, there's 295 of them are about ramp fees, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, no sure you'll, you'll, yep. I'm sure you'll get that one resolved at some stage. Let's get into it. Hi, David. Could you please ask the Victorian Minister for Fisheries if New South Wales could give Victorian seniors reciprocal exemptions for fishing licences? Otherwise, we may as well charge them likewise. Does <laughs> New South Wales not charge... Do th sorry, well, do they charge you pensioners? You can't... In Victoria, you're exempt from a fishing licence with a senior card. Yeah, but in New South, South, New South Wales, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only uh, the Commonwealth issue. Well, I think the senior card is a Victorian issue. Yep. So, yeah. I don't think you've got any jurisdiction over New South no. Wales. Uh, no, no, I, d yeah. I don't. But, um, yeah. but we want to work with them on a licence, um, you know, that makes life Reciprical simpler. Reciprocal rights. Yep. Yeah. Uh, or a dual licence that makes, mm. um, makes life simpler for people who want to fish yeah. in both Victoria and in New South Wales water. Yeah. I gather uh, a great many more of the people who would want a dual licence are Victorians. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's one for us to push and, to and make that's it probably, happen. And I sincerely say this, good luck, because the issue is that more Victorians buy New South Wales licences, so that's for, right. if it was reciprocal, yeah. Yeah. they lose a lot of revenue. Yeah. And, and seriously... Um, and you've got well, I almost reckon thing. boat ramp fees might be easier than getting that one done, <laughs> but anyway, <it's, laughs> let's, let's but see one's time my, will tell. One, one's my direct responsibility and the yeah, other the isn't, other one's not so there. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I probably have greater capacity on one rather than the other, but I'll, yes, I'll hear you loud and, uh, loud and clear on the other Roy stuff. Roy Cassani writes into us and says, Hi Dave and guys, can you please tell me about the pot in the background? Is it legal and can you use them for crab and or yabby catching? Thanks, and where can I purchase them from? Um, that old pot there hanging there, I bought that in 2001. I took my kids out of school, yep. took long service leave from work, and travelled around Australia, towed the tinny around, and I bought that for uh, up in Darwin, getting mud crabs and Corumba and places yeah, like that. Yeah. And um, so it's a little bit old. It's 14 years old. And I've just hung it in the garage and thought, oh, that'd make a good prop one day on a TV <laughs> show that we might do. And yeah. uh, I've got no idea whether that's legal. No, I don't think it is. No, I reckon it would be. It's, no, it's not. It's a, tra it's a trap. So um, yeah. things like platypus can get in that and they can't get out. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, so it's a, a purely a Northern Territory topic. That's Next probably. season we'll have Trelly's yeah. recipes for platypus. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you need everything else. Don't. <laughs> just like chicken. Yeah. And the Victorian <laughs> government's not condoning that. Not written and spoken by... Uh, all right, no uh, the, was cake. the next one, and this <laughs> no. leads us probably into our next. Uh, <laughs> leads us into our next uh, topic. Um, this is from Anthony at Port Arlington. He says, "When is the netting buyout going to begin? The pros down here are going day and night, cleaning the Bellarine area out, taking anything and everything, even the poor old Port Jackson sharks being filleted at the shoreline recently. Politicians simply seem to uh, sorry, politicians seem to." Simply Simply tell you what you want to hear and forget about you once they get what they want. 
What have you got to say about that, Charles? Right. Well, <laughs> it's uh, again. Yep. I, I think it's the second highest topic we get mail on. Yeah. Yes. Um, that in the jala pot. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Yep. Yeah. We'll, um, yeah. we'll we'll get to that. Okay. So there's 43 licensees. Yep. Um, they are going to be at the rough end of some pretty difficult change for them. Mm. Um, I met with a group of these uh, licensees um, probably about three weeks ago. Um, for some, it's a fifth generation business. Mm. Um, for others, you know, they've not been in it very long, but it's, you know, it's their livelihood and that of people they employ. So it's a big and difficult change. And I'm going to be having a few meetings more like that with, um, with the people who are affected by this because um, in response to that specific question, uh, you know, we got elected, and in the case of the um, the licence holders for netting in the bays, um, we're telling them exactly what they don't want to hear. Mm. Um, I'm sure they'd very much like us to break this election promise, but what I've been saying to them and will continue to say is that we won't. So work is on in earnest on this. Um, I think it's probably not wildly optimistic to think that we might have the first part, first licences bought out by the end of this year, certainly in the first half of next year. Uh, we're uh, in the process, I'm in the process of, uh, of appointing um, a specialist advisor to okay. work on the implementation of this policy, to be somebody that will work with each of these 43 uh, businesses about this change for them and of course our rec, uh, our rec fishers as well. Um, but we're going to be doing this and uh, you know we've put some serious money aside you know, in election commitments. Um, this will be of course the kind of thing people will be looking out for in the budget next week um, but we're doing this but we need to do it respectfully and sensitively for those 43 individuals or families mm. that are you know going to be having to go through some pretty difficult change. So you're but not going to rush into it I guess is the, the, no, big, no, we're, um, we're the big message you've got to do it follow due proper process? We need to do it <coughs> carefully mm. and properly. We need to. Um, we need to. Obviously, um, I have a responsibility to to the state's interests. So I have a responsibility to make sure the policy is fully implemented. Mm. We said we'd do this over eight years. So for some of these people. Getting out early is going to work for them. For others of them, getting out a bit later is going to work for them, depending on mm. you know where their own businesses are at, whether they're near retirement age. These kind of really personal factors. So we're going to work through this with each of them and provide them with support to get out. Um, but they're all getting out, and uh, you know the end point of that is eight years. But I reckon we'll see some good progress sooner. I mean, the rumour mill tells me that up to a third of them might be pretty keen to get out pretty quickly. Mm. Yeah, so we're getting on with it. We're not dilly dallying at all. Um, it's just quite complicated and important that we go through a lot of proper processes along the way. We'll get these licences. Um, independently valued so everybody knows what they're talking about. We've got a sliding catch which was the main difference between our policy and that of the former government. So as uh, licences are bought out the total take from the commercials will start to drop from the beginning. Mm. So wreck fishers will see a change um, pretty early on uh, but it's not something that's going to happen overnight because it is difficult. Mm. And I gather politicians have been promising people since 1971 at various points that they would do this, um, Andrew's government's going to, going to do, do it. it yeah. Yeah. I've got a complicated question for you because there's about three parts to it. One of the m uh, main questions that we get asked is will recreational fishing licence money contribute to the buyout? Uh, because there's a lot of freshwater anglers that are going, they're, they're worried that the licence money, the trust fund will be taken up no. purely with, with, um, with buying licences. If all the licence holders um, say, I want out now, they want out by the end of the year, is the state capable of implementing that buyout in that quicker period with the money available? Oh, look, in the same way that <coughs> we might have, in theory, all licensees say, no, I don't want out, and all licensees saying, yeah, we all want out, um, I think that's reasonably unlikely, mm. um, but that's just something we're going to need to work through and we're going to need to cash flow it through the budget. Um, but on uh, the... On the um, license fees money that you're talking about. Now this is quite separate to that. Um, I wouldn't assume for a minute that your viewers trawled through the 
financial statements that the election the, the political parties put out yeah. you know in the in the last week before an election with a line by line dot points but um, I can assure you that um, there's lots and lots of good ideas and lots and lots of good policies uh, that we will be able to put uh, those license fees to use for the benefit of wreck fishing community in Victoria uh, but this one is not in that category. There you go. You've heard it first from the Minister and uh, hopefully some progress on that. When we come back in August, we'll be able to give you all the news and update on that because this is the last show. Just a reminder of that. We will be back on Tuesday, 4th of August, our first show back after a little bit of a break. Coming up, Fishing Hotspots, what's coming up on C31? And a few more minutes with the Minister. See you after this. Talking Fishing Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Hello, Richie Minnow here. It's now time for this week's Fishing Hotspots on Talking Fishing. Marvellous. The old uh, Richie Minnow lives Richie's on, doesn't he? Yeah, does. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's good stuff. Richie, let's get straight into hot spots because we've got plenty still to talk with the Minister. St Leonard's number one. That is going to be the whiting capital for at least the next three months, I yep. would have thought. It'll continue yep. right through winter. Some cracker fish, and I'm told the leather jackets are gone. There that you is go. great yeah. news. So <laughs> you probably got your whiting again. Charlie, we've been just been plagued with leather jackets on all yeah, the whiting okay. grounds from Rosebud, yep. Pinnace Channel, Simmons Channel. It's just been terrible. Yep. Apparently they're gone. Yeah. Don't know why. Yeah. Could be the new ED, just got rid of them or something like that. <laughs> Can't catch that a trout in Tolondo, he's gone yeah. out. The yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. let's keep moving along. Karam, <laughs> if you want a bite at uh, a, a good sized snapper and it's not traditional snapper season, get out off Karam right now. Yeah. I'd, I'd go 18 to 20 metres, yeah. go out deep. Yeah, um, head to the deep water. Yeah. Uh, if you can get a tide change along with first light, I know that's pretty tough considering we're coming into the coldest part of the year. But yep. um, Put the Ugg boots on. That's right, short, short bite window. Um, uh, but the rewards are there, definitely. San Remo, number three. Um, we saw that big calamari come from the eastern entrance. San Remo, the weed patches around there, absolutely on fire for calamari, big and, and whiting. And if you're fishing for whiting there, please have a squid jig ready. Do definitely. not go whiting fishing without a calamari, or like a, a yeah. jig yeah. ready. Sit in a rod holder. When you see them following up the whiting, bang, because they are big yeah. at the moment. And it's one of those notorious one. areas for it too. The squid oh. will sit under your boat and wait for the whiting to get, you yeah. know, for you to swing the whiting in and then yeah. bang, gone. It's Absolutely. amazing because you're using a squid to catch whiting and the squid will come along. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah, it's sort of that. Uh, yeah. Number four, let's go in some of the regional areas because it is getting a bit cold and people want to go out and get a trout and enjoy that cold water fishery. Lake Windaree in Ballarat. Jala, have you ever been fishing there at all? Uh, I've come very close. <laughs> yeah, okay. I run around it a bit. There you go. Slowly. I tell you, there's been a lot of people fishing. Yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. out fishing yeah. on Lake Wendere, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Brown no, trout to a kilo I saw in your report last that's week. That's right, yeah. Really, so. You've got to take up rowing and put a lure at the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Across the lake. There's a few people rowing on yeah. it as well. Uh, one of those jelly beans yeah. behind us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The thing that we're going to donate yeah. to Travis later on. It's a great centre of activity. Lake Wendere, fantastic. Lake Bull and is the other one. one um, of my favourites. Like some cool. nice trout, some mm. nice salmon coming yep. out of there at the moment. And the, the, salmon, the salmon will be big time. They'll be huge by now. They just mm. graze and graze and graze and they, they're getting big. So they'll be great come this winter, mm. definitely. Uh, number six, lucky last. And it's been a feature of the last few weeks. Portland, get down there and enjoy the tuna fishing. You do not need to go out far. It's They're not out at the 400 metre line or anything like that. Yeah. Out past Lawrence Rock and not far from that. I think we you guys talking about um, a website and actually get a photo of where they're being caught. Was that you guys I was talking about? Oh, you take a photo else? and you, it marks a the photo. No, you know, it's just they're that close. People That's are taking photos cool. from the beach saying this is where they're caught. Oh, so, okay, yeah. Awesome. Wow. Unbelievable. Um, very, very quickly, let's have a look at what's coming up on C31. We'll fly through this as well. But tonight, catch and cook. I have not had one ounce of time to look at Ronnie's Facebook tonight. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a great episode. Uh, Savage Seas after that. Uh, Thursday morning, you can catch us again at 7 o'clock in the morning if you want to watch the replay of us before uh, you head off to work or while you're eating breakfast, that's all good. Plenty on Friday. Extravaganza on Saturday runs from 10.30 through to 12.30 and then 6 o'clock to 7.30. That's what's coming up on C31. Let's keep going. Uh, Tolondo. Let's talk about Tolondo. Yeah. Um, one of the things with no water, 
Um, according to Peter Walsh, there's none available. There was also no fish available to stock. He didn't want to stock them. Will we see a return of stocking of, of trout into Lake Talona this year? Look, I think we need to <coughs> consider the water levels. Yep. We need to, um, you know, take some advice from that advisory group that we've got oh, yeah. set up about um, whether or not it's going to be sustainable. Like we ne don't need to be stocking if water levels are of a level where they're not going to they're not going to go mm. well. But um, if our wreck fishing community and our advice is um, that we should go for it, then we will. Yeah. Uh, but we just need to be very conscious in balancing uh, that water that's been made available for Tolondo uh, with what's a pretty dry season. I mean, it's been not bad the last mm. few days. All that rain that we <laughs> had last week, I think it missed all that area. Though, it yeah, it? yeah, that's right. So Rush. it has been very patchy and it is quite a dry area. So we just need to get that balance right. If yeah. um, stocking is worthwhile and is going to be, um, you know, going to be providing good opportunities for people because mm. the water depths are enough to, um, you know, to support that, then, you know, we'll have a good look at that. What we might do, because I think that will probably be decided in the next few weeks, I, yep. I would have thought. Um, as the trout season starts coming on for stocking, we might keep people up to date on our Facebook page. Yep. Let people know about that. Yep. Um, let's keep moving on. Uh, Estuary Perch. That's been a real big success story, Jala. Um, there's been like some really good stockings in different areas where yeah. they may not have been stocked before. Yeah, You've got some that's of the right. success so stories there. Yes, um, and and, a, and a, quite a list of locations yeah. which I'll which I'll run you through. Um, so there's a large scale stocking of estuary perch in ten different waterways through okay. southwest Victoria, um, including some parts of the state I was in today. I was mm. in Hamilton earlier today. Um, so Lake Bolac and Hamilton, Beaufort, Albert Park Lake, um, Strawn, the Melton Reservoir, Werribee River, Patobe, Kakarook and Devil Bend Reservoir. Uh, wow. So yeah, it's not a bad list, is it? Mm. Lots of options for people. Mm. Ads, Estuary Perch, you've fished for them plenty of times. Yep. Um, some of these stock lakes, what do you reckon of that? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, because they're naturally quite an aggressive fish and you'll catch them even when they're quite small. I, I know there's been a few of the boys from the shop, Dave, getting them uh, on service lures as we come onto the back of our summer season <coughs> when we still had a bit of warmth in the air. There was a few being caught on surface lures at Devil Bend already. So mm. they're not big, they're still well undersized, so they need to be released. But mm. like I said, a naturally aggressive fish and they'll school up quite big. So once they really get themselves set in all of these waterways, there's no reason why um, they won't be caught. It just adds another dynamic to you know the already great fisheries set up in in that list. It just adds that little something extra, you know, a bit of excitement. They're mm. awesome fish. Yeah. It's probably um, another species that we don't really chase either. We don't hear a lot of it. No, and so I, it's, it's an emerging fishery, I think, for a lot definitely. of people that haven't done it before. And Lake Bolac, good size, yeah. 28 centimetres. Um, my wow. sources tell me that they're nice and plump. Oh, there um, you go, and yeah. and you know, wreck fishers and our people, our people at Fisheries Victoria, have done a really good job making you know making that Travis sort of fishery one, yeah, available. <laughs> Travis so wouldn't have caught one I, um, yet. I, I whizzed past Lake Bolac twice today, once on the way from Ballarat to Hamilton and once on the way from Hamilton down go. here uh, to Melbourne and um, you know it's a, it's a very nice spot for people to go go mm. and check out if they've not been there before but mm. um, good fishing there. Jala we're getting to the end of the show I just really sincerely wish you well for the rest of your term of government and obviously we'll get you back on the couch uh, when we return in August but thank you for coming in tonight. It's been the Jala pile has been building. <laughs> I've got my homework. <laughs> yeah. am, am I to come back in the, in your next season? If you could respond on all to all of, of those, yeah, yes, yeah. Right or it. one of your delegates, I'd yeah. give to Travis, and he yeah. might have caught a trout by then. But, <laughs> well, um, we can only but sincerely, hope. from all of us here at Talking Fishing and our viewers, because they don't get an opportunity to hear direct from the minister. Um, you know, it's, it's a rare occasion. And thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Look, thanks for the opportunity to come on again and have a chat. Um, it's nice to be able to have that two-way discussion yeah. um, with fishers and I hope I've been able to answer at least a few of the questions that, um, that people might have in their minds about our Target One Million plans. That's it for Talking Fishing. Hope you enjoyed the first season of Talking Fishing. We've certainly enjoyed the last 29 weeks bringing it to you. For the next four weeks, C31 will replace some of your favourite episodes, including tonight, and we'll be back live on your TV on the first Tuesday in August. Can I just take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, Shimano, Spotters Sunglasses, Tackle World, Supercharged Batteries, and Southern East, South Eastern Speedliner. For without them, the show wouldn't be possible. A very big thanks to the boys in the control room. Without those 
those guys, we're stuffed. Kevin Atwood, to put it simply, <laughs> Kevin Atwood, our executive producer who puts this whole show together, Craig Davenport, also known as Richie Minow, our sound engineer, Elliot, Mitch, Louie, JJ, you guys just make this show happen. And to you two gentlemen, Trelly Ads, thank you very much for your contribution, as I said. And to all you people at home that watch us, thank you for your support. Without you, C31 wouldn't be asking us back. Enjoy the repeat shows for the next four weeks until the first Tuesday evening in August. Stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.